Hello everyone, welcome to a new lecture. In this video we are going to talk about metamorphic textures. So metamorphic rocks exhibit a variety of textures and these can range from textures similar to the original protolith in low grades of metamorphism to textures that are purely produced during metamorphism and leave the rock with little resemblance to the original protolith. But let's ask ourselves, what is a metamorphic texture? Well, a metamorphic texture or metamorphic textures are a description of size, shape, and arrangement of the mineral grains within a metamorphic rock. Rocks contain minerals and grains, and the way these minerals and grains are oriented with respect to the rock and with respect to each other create textures. So as you can see in this example, this rock has a texture and the grains and minerals oriented themselves in a way that gave this kind of texture to this rock. Metamorphic rocks that contain platy minerals such as micas and elongated minerals such as amphiboles typically display some kind of preferred orientation in which the mineral grain exhibit a parallel to subparallel alignment. So a preferred orientation where the minerals have a degree of alignment is called a foliation. So what is a foliation? Well, a foliation is a planar arrangement of mineral grains or crystals within a rock in a preferred orientation. The mineral in a foliated metamorphic rock are oriented in a parallel or subparallel arrangement. Foliated metamorphic rocks are generally associated with regional metamorphism. Also, you should know this, that foliation is a fundamental characteristic of metamorphic rocks. So let me show you a couple of examples. So as you can see, these rocks are all metamorphic rocks. You can see the grains in the rocks have some sort of preferred orientation or in more scientific words, they are foliated. So now we know that metamorphic rocks have preferred orientation that is called foliation, but how do they occur? Well, we have a couple of mechanisms that make grains to foliate. The first one is by external pressure. If you have a rock and the grains in the rock are oriented randomly, if you force it from a side or from all sides, the grains in the rock will align themselves so these grains as you can see they are randomly oriented when you have an external force acting on these grains what you get is an alignment that is in a preferred orientation of the grain so these grains want to orient themselves in this way so when the force acts on them they actually orient themselves in this way Another mechanism that grains use in order to align themselves or foliate is by recrystallization. So when you have heat and this heat acts on these grains, after they are recrystallized and probably there is force on them, they will orient themselves in a way that is preferred to the grain or to the mineral structure. So heat also can help minerals in a rock to foliate or to align themselves in an orientation that is preferred to the mineral. So all these arrangements, mechanisms, and deformation of mineral grains create different types of metamorphic textures. So what are some foliated textures well we have three types of foliated textures we have slatty textures we have schistose textures and we have nisic textures so let's look at each of these in more detail the first one is slatty textures or slatty texture this texture is caused by the parallel orientation of microscopic grains a pervasive parallel foliation which means layering of fine-grained platy minerals, sometimes chloride, in a direction perpendicular to the direction of maximum stress, produces rocks that have slatty textures. So basically, slatty textures are those rocks that split into thin slabs when hit with a hammer. So this is an example of a slatty texture. As you can see, this rock, if you hit it, it will break into sheet-like other pieces of rocks. The name of the rock with this texture is usually called slate and the rock is characterized by tendency to separate along parallel planes. So just like a sheet, those rocks that have slatty textures break apart in sheety or slatty like planes. The feature is a property known as slatty cleavage. The other kind of foliated textures that we have is schistosic texture. So 
What is schistostic texture? Well, schistose texture is a layering in a coarse grained crystalline rock due to the parallel arrangement of platinum mineral grains such as muscovite and biotite. Other minerals may be present in the rock and they are typically quartz and feldspar plus a variety of other minerals such as garnet, sterolite, kainite, sillimanite and other type of minerals that give the rock schistose texture. As you can see in this example, which is a schist specimen, it shows the characteristic of schistose texture caused by platymicus. So schistose textures is a layering in a coarse grained crystalline rock due to the parallel arrangement of platy mineral grains such as muscovite and biotite. As you can see the platymicus in this rock have arranged themselves in a parallel way to create this schistose texture. The last type of foliated textures that we have is nisic texture. Nisic texture is a texture that is or it is a segregation of minerals due to ion migration during high grade metamorphism. So when you have a rock and it is subjected to high grade metamorphism, this leads to migration of ions and created band like features or textures that is called Nisic texture. The name of this texture came from the metamorphic rock gneiss that is characterized by banding typically light and dark minerals. It is also indicative of high grade metamorphism around 600 to 700 Celsius, so having enough heat for the ion migration to occur. So when you have enough heat that allows ion migration to occur, it creates these type of textures that are band-like and they are called nisic texture. So these were the three basic types of foliated textures and with this we come to the end of the lecture. So to recap the whole lecture